Hey up and welcome to the Temple of Blair. This is a conversation with Las Vegas Rock Outfit. Escape the Fate, uh, speaking to the drummer Rob. Uh, now, I'm a little bit late on this one. We must have recorded it about three or four weeks ago uh, in anticipation of the new album, Out of the Shadows, uh, which came out on September 1st. So all the conversation is effectively talking about the run-up to the new album. But uh, go and check it out. Get stuck in. One, two, fuck shit up. Yeah, so thank you for, you know, giving us the opportunity to, you know, just let people know what's going on with us right now. Oh, you're quite welcome. But I'll open with a um, a warm greeting from a mutual friend of ours, because about two hours ago, I was on the phone to Dave Deering, who was your front of house guy. Over oh, here. good old Dave Deering, hard of hearing. <laughs> I've not heard that one before. <laughs> oh yeah, no, oh, that's that's what we call him. You know what's weird is I've always been back and forth with Dave because uh, he's been he he's a crazy guy. You know, he's yep. like very just goofy. I don't know, fucking wild and everything. And you know, so we've had some differences in the past because I'm typically a quiet guy. You know, I've had my moments too, but I've been a quiet guy for the most part i'd like to keep to myself and yeah. we really bonded on this last tour that we just did we 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 rode down and he really understood me i understood him we kind of matured into our own way and we're I, i'd say we're good friends now i think that's what you want especially on like uh on an aggressive touring cycle you need to make sure the uh you, that circle that, or that camaraderie is there and that the broing down is is only moments away if you need it you know yeah exactly and and uh, you know with us it's a lot of guys uh, as far as crew we've we've used for a while and you know over the last four or five years since like before the pandemic or whatever like we've kind of gone back to the same guys because we just i think we've all just matured into a certain place to where you know we just have our jobs and everyone just like does their thing and it's you know we just it's easier to live with each other now basically yeah, I mean, I've worked with Dave a couple of times, and I'm going to work with him week after next. He's he's got the right attitude. Um, he's a friendly face in you know in in such a complicated field such as sound engineering, where everything needs to be bullet time precision. He's a, yeah, he's always a good sure. guy to have around. Yeah. Anyway, man, I always, sorry, go on. No, I'll say he's kind of weird with audio too, man. He's like he's this like savant it's like he'll be so wacky and add in every other aspect of his life but you get him behind a, a mixing board and i don't know he just like everything gets channeled all the energy just goes the right way so it's really cool man it is yeah i mean i've seen gigs go south and he'd just be like okay well this is what we're gonna do first we're gonna do and it just completely even though the world's falling apart around him he's just the, the coolest cat yeah for sure man but for sure Dave Deering, hard of hearing. I'm going to write that down because I need to. I need to make sure that I commit that one to memory. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, so let's discuss um, newer passages. So, out of the shadows, first of September. Um, I've heard a bit of it, and I'm one. I'm really happy. I'm happy with it as a as a as a consumer as a fan. But I wanted to try and talk about the evolution from chemical warfare and i feel the songs that feel to me heavier it feels sonically you're going into a different space than um the previous records because normally I, I i picture skate the fate as like you got one foot in a kind of a theatrical approach to your music and then another foot in but this is also a friday night and it's a party and instead of leaning one way or the other with the new record you've leaned forward and it feels like we're going for like it feels like this could be an arena record, like it could be a much bigger scale. I don't know if you agree with that, but this is kind of the vibe I was getting. It was like the transition from, and we're thinking way back, but remember when like Avenged Sevenfold started playing arenas and that sound, if you think of like the sound that they had to adapt to, to change the hooks a little bit to make them a little bit more feeling. There was a different stereo imaging required and i feel that's kind of the way you guys have gone with this new record like it, it feels like it's going to fill out a much bigger space i know i'm pontificating uh, and just going off on one but you can no, disagree I'm, with me. I'm, <laughs> no i'm 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 listening because i i listen I, i'm i am digesting it just the same as you 
because, you know, the thing that's going on in my head isn't what comes out, right? Because sure. I'm I'm limited to what I can do. Craig's limited to what he can do and so on. And so we require each other. And, you know, we've brought in a couple new guys. We have now uh, Maddie on lead guitar shredding and most importantly, Eric shreds, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who's been on the road with us for, you know, the last six or seven years. He's been part of like the family and he's been like a stage guy and he came to us um, somewhere during the pandemic and was like, Hey man, I'm thinking about my life, thinking about my future. And I love this band and, and I love being a part of it, but I need to know if I have a bigger future with it mm -hmm. or if, you know, I, you know, if I'm going to continue in the position of sort of being a work for hire, then I want to explore other things, you know? Ringa. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, you know, we called each other and, and, you know, we talked for a little bit and we're like, you know what, dude, he's he's a big part of it. And I think he's because there's more to a band than just like who's writing what there's, you yeah. know, there's a stage elements. There's, you know, the person who can talk, who can market it. There's a guy who's going to be a quality control. There's a guy who's going to be like, we got to get the fuck out there. And then, you know, it, it's a family. We fight, but we learn to grow with each other. Who's going to last for a long time. And so he was a very big part of that. And with Maddie, a lot of things are transitioning still. We're not, you know, we're we're in the early phases with him, mm -hmm. but he just fit in so well as a shredder. And yeah. so with all that being said, it's just something happened along the way. This album was recorded in sort of two different phases. Okay. Last year, um, well, shit, actually uh, two years ago now, technically, um, we went in and we had a, a, some ideas or we, we didn't know we Thrasher was still in the band. We went to John Fellman, uh, who's done a few of our records who did mm -hmm. the chemical warfare. We almost went into him as from my, from my aspect, from where I'm sitting, it was like, I don't even know if we're a fucking band anymore. <laughs> so if we go to him, we're going to at least get something good. That's sure. the floor, you know, the ceilings, whatever. Cause you can get lucky. And just write a hit that just for whatever reason catches on, even if you don't even think it's any good, but it catches on. So the floor is that we're going to be all right. The ceiling could be what it is. Then yeah. somewhere along the way, you know, Thrasher decided that, you know, he was focusing more on his engineering and recording. And, you know, he worked with Travis Barker and Machine Gun Kelly. And mm -hmm. he not only found a great financial opportunity in that regard, but he found an opportunity to you know, do another one of his passions and, and be part of something where his music that he's participating in, you know, I don't know to what extent he creates and writes and is an artist, but he certainly is part of capturing it. And in that regard, it's reaching a lot of people. And so that's a passion of his. He doesn't have to tour all those things. Right. So he, once he left, we, we were still working with him at that time, but he was sort of one foot in one foot out. And it was creating a lot of tension and we didn't really have a focus. We didn't have a direction. And so we went in, we were working with John Fellman. We had all these different uh, writing partners, which we do sometimes, you know, we'll reach out. It's like, oh, this person wrote this. Or sometimes we'll have friends that we reach out to like, hey, man, you want to fucking want to jam? Yeah. And we'll just write stuff and learn and all those kinds of things, you know. And once we kind of got through that early portion Somehow Thrasher was gone. We grouped up together in Phoenix, Arizona, where Craig and Eric live. And we got in Eric's studio. And there was something so chemically reactive and cohesive that it was just like, this is the band. This mm -hmm. is the direction we need to go. And as it turned out, what we were wanting was to not have any limitations what we wanted was to not think about we need a hit. We need something that is regular, you know, verse, chorus, quick, quick intro, verse, chorus, catchy, paint by numbers, mm -hmm. factory, fucking let's do it. But we got Craig's voice. So that's what makes us us. Yeah, yeah. This was like, let's try some shit. Let's be weird. Like nothing's off limits except if you don't like it. 
If you don't like it, that's the only thing that keeps it from, from being recorded. And that's what we worked on. And guess what? We like fucking metal. And we like emo. And we like pop shit. And we like theatrical, weird character shit. And our lyrics were more of a direction. And we, you know, we all talked about shedding our old skin and becoming these new men and letting go of our past and things that have held us back and mm -hmm. our anxieties and everything and sort of being reborn. And so that's where it's sort of out of the shadows because we've been living in this sort of dark place and we're coming out of it now and yeah. we're looking into the light and wanting to be out, you know? And so it was like, it was really cool. So as far as, you know, what you're saying, maybe you're talking sonically or whatever. Mm -hmm. All I know is we just didn't have very many boundaries yeah. and that was really, really exciting. So you'll hear half the record may sound a little bit more, I don't know, for lack of a better word, pop structured, but we kind of okay. took those songs even and mess with them and made them have shredding guitar solos and darker riffs than what they originally were before. And then we'd go out and we'd have like this six minute song. That's just, you know, provocative and kind of about, <laughs> I don't even want to give it away because the song's not out yet, but the <laughs> line is really cool. And I don't know. It's just, it's just been exciting dude. to be honest. I have no idea how to define what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't love it all. Sometimes I'm like, fuck, I wish it could have been this. Other days I'm like, wow, we so beyond exceeded expectations. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty, I don't know, man, it's overwhelming. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'm glad you broke it down like that because it kind of hearing you play that back to me, something formed in my head. So I'm talking about the sonic, you know, the stereo imaging and the, the, you know, the way it's evolved. It's just fun. That's the, that's kind of how you playing that back as, as, sort of paint that picture for me you can kind of tell that it's fun and it was fun to produce and it's fun to deliver and that's what this record feels to, feels to me like it is and now that you've told me you're kind of trying not to create as many stakes and uh have a you know there needs to be a single there needs to be this and needs to be that we just need to have fun that all adds up in what i'm hearing it completely makes sense Right. And, you know, just to give you a little bit of insight as far as how the creation of it is, because I guess that's what we're, we're, you know, we're here for, because you could just hear the songs for themselves and what sure. we like musically. But the thing is, when you go into make a record with John Feldman, which I've already discussed the reasoning for me, at least like, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's a fucking amazing producer. So mm. if you can go with him and he's willing to work with you, do it. But, you know, on the on the other side of it is like, yeah, it's like we're, you know, we're taking the opportunity to work with him. But like, worst case scenario, this goes good. And then somewhere yeah. along the way, when you write with him, he's very hands on. He's not I don't even want to say he's a producer. What he is, is he becomes another band member. So he's writing with you. You're you're he's making riffs. He's making hooks. He's He's helping with lyrics. He's doing all these things, you know. And sometimes it's great because we have such a good relationship with him to where it's it's fine sometimes if it doesn't originate from one of us. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Like you're he's part of it, you know? And then again, somewhere along the way, it was like, nah, we have a vision here. And the worst part about this new album, which is sucks to say when I'm trying to promote it, <laughs> the worst part is that we're just we're getting started onto something right. that is going to be grander and I think really going to push the boundaries and take us to a next place. I don't know what that means statistically, numbers, listeners, whatever, like tickets. I, I don't know. I'm speaking artistically because you can never bank on any of that stuff. It either happens mm -hmm. or it doesn't. You could try, but it either happens or it doesn't. But when it comes to artistically, we're just – starting and i wish we would have started where we left off and gone from there and yeah i think uh we're on to something but it is it is fun to get to tell a big name fucking awesome producer hey man we kind of want to do these things ourselves <laughs> <laughs> and just like we got a little bit of a vision you know and we kind of want to do this so we just got one of his engineers recorded in his studio and we had some fun, you know, it wasn't always fun because we fought a lot. I'm always 
very passionate. So if I have an idea and I can't express that to the other guys and I don't know how to sing it, I don't know how to play it on guitar, but it's in my head and they want to change something about what I've created or whatever, I fucking throw tantrums like a child. But to me, that's still in the big picture fun because we're creating and we're getting things out and we're trying to understand each other's vision. And you realize that they're not there to destroy your vision. They're there because they want to take it to the next level. And then me as a drummer, I also had to take a step back sometimes and say, let me take their ideas and give them the best fucking drums ever. You know what I mean? So it's, that's, that's kind of where we're at with it, man. So yes, fun to summarize it is that was the key element. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of new beginnings and speaking of John, so as you mentioned, you worked with John before, but this time around, not only is he the producer, he's also the label guy. Did that change yep. the dynamic in any way? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it's, it's tough to say. For the most part, it's positive. Mm. Um, you know, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't say that negatively because at the end of the day, John Feldman is pretty much, uh, he's banking on himself, right? Because it's it's part of his label, and you know, if it fails, then that's a waste of his time and resources, right? Mm -hmm. If it succeeds, he double succeeds. So, from the producer, writer, you know, contributor side to the also the fucking label side, right? So he can yeah. he can double down on it if he if it works. But you know, it's mostly been really positive. Because he's allowed us. He's like, at the end of the day, he goes, it's your band. You guys do what you want to do, you know, and I'm down for whatever. And he's always open to changes and he's open to doing whatever. He'll put his foot down when he feels passionate about something. And he'll be like, I really feel this way, but we'll talk it through and we'll hear each other out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, for me, I'm such an artist about things. I'm always so much about feel and what's right for you and what do you like? So if you tell me you like this song, is because you think that there's an agenda with it or is it just because you just think it's fucking sick? If you think it's sick, awesome. Let's release it. That's a single. If you're just like kind of like, I think this one will work better because it's better if we release a heavy song first so we don't piss off the hardcore fans and we can impress them and then we'll release the the catchier one later. Now I'm like, yeah, you you know, you're you're starting to sound like a label guy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then uh, but I don't think that at any point that affected the creative process. We so. did go in and just make music. And then, you know, as it started to flush itself out, um, you know, we just kind of looked at the songs and said, I think this one will work better. This one's catchier. And this one serves this purpose. And then this goes here. I'm sorry. I got some fucking jets. It's cool. lit by a bass. So it's probably really loud. Um, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. I just That's watched what... Oppenheimer. So I'm kind of freaked out right now. <laughs> um, no, but uh is it good it's uh is it good is oftentimes a good yeah oh my gosh i don't know when i left the theater i was like ah, man i love christopher nolan little slightly disappointed and then as the days followed i'm just talking to people about it i'm like that was the best fucking thing ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are the best ones, man. Those are the best. I'm yeah, it, it tomorrow night. I'll just tell you this: it's a three-hour movie. It's two hours and like fifty-seven minutes of of fucking dialogue. All right, and right. it's it, but it makes you think so much, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still a cinematic experience, which is like music, right? You want to mm -hmm. have to say something. But you can't just make this acoustic campfire record that tells the story of your life. At some point, you need some riffs and some fucking breakdowns or something. You know what I mean? Like, you need some special effects. So totally. that's where, you know, you get someone like John or you get Eric uh, in our band to, like, fucking put the pedal to the metal on some of that stuff. But, it, yeah, it, as, a la as a label, he's he's been nothing but great for us, man. He really has. He's just allowed us to create, has never rushed us. Never like said, we need this out by this date. Just lets us pick whatever we want. And it's a lot of freedom, you know, mm. and, and that's really all you can ask for as a band. It's a very punk thing as well, like starting your own label and then getting not getting involved in the music, but sort of flattening the hierarchy so they can be sort of closer to the process and um, you know, delivering the best for everyone, I guess. 
because he has to yeah. still think big picture, and that was probably different from his role previously. But no, it sounds great. So I'm 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 very much looking forward to it coming out and having everyone else hear it. But uh, I wanted to ask about the cover art. Where did that come from? It's a very uh, it's a, it's a very good sort of evocative image and very clear as well. It's not just like a symbol. It's not a um, not just text. It's a nice cartoony sort of comic ish. Um, it's like funny you say style. it's not just a symbol because that. There was a lot of ideas being thrown around. One of them was just to have our sort of new symbol. Like, um, you know, if if it is this album, the theme of it is a, a rebirth of sorts. Um, that you know that the the symbol that we've generated is kind of representative of our our new selves, and that's mm -hmm. like kind of like this is the new escape to fate. Um, but it's weird. It I'll be honest with you, it sort of stemmed from a misunderstanding. Oh, um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> So Craig, uh, you know, who's, you know, he's evolved into an awesome leader over the last year or so. Um, he's like, you know, we're talking about what kind of shirts we're going to bring on the tour of this. I'm like, well, we got to bring a This War Is Our shirt. You know, that's uh, a lot of the old school fans are going to go to the show. They're going to want it. So we have to bring that out. We always have to. And he's like, okay. And he took that to mean... I really like the this war is ours artwork and we need to go in that direction with everything. And that's that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant <laughs> we need one shirt that's that specific because it's already out and people recognize it. Right. And so he reached out to the artist who did that, who's also, you know, he's done Avenged Sevenfold stuff as well. And we sent some kind of rough sketches and ideas and it was like, I don't know, man. I don't know where this is going. We're me and TJ were thinking a little more modern, thinking a little like something photorealistic and with some almost like you would think like a AI thing might generate or something like that. Mm. And you know, once he gave the full color and everything, it just was so striking. Yeah. You know, we were scrolling through different ideas. Something about it just kept catching our eye and you know, then you start to put together because when you think about the art, you don't just think about something that resonates with you. When you look at it, you start to put it together. Like, what's it going to look like on stage? What's going to look like on a shirt? What's it going to look like when we fuck with the other elements of it? It's got this purple look to it and all this stuff. Like, so you start to really feel like you can create this almost like a brand around it. And yeah. it just, it just happened really quick once we saw that final piece. And yeah, it, it kind of embodies it all. The, the concept of it is we keep returning to this girl who's like this, I guess we've now defined her as fate. And if you watch this, there you look at this war as ours, you see the girl with the mummy wrap and stuff. And this one now she's like, we're leaving that death, darkness, shadow life behind and going yeah. into this upward trajectory of light. So that's kind of like the concept of it. And I don't know. I think it's really cool. And then we have these other elements for inside artwork and things like that, that all mm -hmm. kind of are cohesive. And it's, I don't know, man, I just like it. <laughs> it's it's cool gnarly. It. It's striking is a good word, but also like it's a, it's not like a moving image and it kind of matches the pace of the album in a way. Yeah. Moving image. That's what I'm, you know, when I said you start thinking about all the other stuff, once you look at it, yeah. that's part of it because we're going to bring some led walls on the next tour and yeah Sweet. moving image yeah <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the next tour you've been in the uk i think you were in last year with fozzy and you did a european run this summer um now academically i'm quite interested in this side of things um just as a as a, as a metalhead and a, and a and a concert goer what did you notice were the main challenges of of touring post pandemic um, it's, it, it, I don't know. It took a minute to get back into rhythm at first, like last year. Cause I think we were one of the bands that kind of took a little bit longer than most of them for, a, for a number of reasons, you mm -hmm. know, um, we were going through changes with Thrasher, you know, we were working on an album. I had suffered a really bad foot injury, so I couldn't play drums it still wow. bothers me now. And I kind of just have to live with it. And, uh, so there was all these other elements. And when you're like trying to, you know, I have kids and, you know, when their schools one day they're in school, the next day it gets shut down. You know, it's like, I cannot afford to go on the road and like have my kids, you know, 
be out of school, you know? So everything got put on hold for a long time. Mm. And once, once we came back, um, some of those types of challenges still existed. And so the travel, I mean, look, I, I don't want to get into a, a political thing because quite frankly, that's just not my expertise, yeah, sure. but, but, uh, economically like it's it goes without saying like just the price of things is is not what it was a year or two ago it just so you have to plan differently and you have to think about stuff like in a different way and you're not sure uh if you're succeeding or not based on some of the numbers you're like what's what what do you mean it's going to cost this much and you're like are we even going to make money like are we are we going to be able to have crew like you start to think about shit like that and yeah at the end of the day we just do what we've always done and go well we fucking want to put on a good show like we got to spend the money we got to do this so that was like a factor like just being open about it yeah um but you know there's there there's i felt an energy I felt uh, a sort of like, oh shit, we're back, you know. And the mm-hmm. landscape has changed. the The audience member is different now. Their new generations are in, and they express themselves in different ways and all that. But music is still kind of it's it's a bonding experience, and that was really really cool. So I mostly had an overall great experience, you know, and. I was a little worried. I wasn't sure when we first went last year to South America and Mexico, there was still a lot of weird rules and we missed a flight to go to Colombia because I didn't get stamped and you had to get cleared because you had to have the vaccination card and two of the guys couldn't put it on their record. The promoter didn't do their vaccination thing. So they wouldn't let us on the flight and had all these rules. So now we're stuck at the airport for like 10 hours, have to go get our bags, wondering if they're on a plane to fucking Colombia. And are we going to Colombia? How do we get our equipment back? And it, it always works out one way or another. (laughs) You somehow never miss the show. It's fucking weird. We get there. It's like 11 PM. We're supposed to be on stage at nine. We're on stage like at midnight, but there's an energy to that because the fans are getting restless and wondering if they're if we're gonna play or not. And then when we show up, it's like, oh shit, they're fucking here. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> so it it makes for moments. And sure. um, just from a personal standpoint, you know, as as a father and a guy who's getting a little older, you know, I, I start to wonder like. I've always questioned if I wanted to be in a band and I started to wonder like, man, maybe now it's really time to not be in a band, but you know, being able to be on stage and like, we just did grass pop and we did slam dunk and you see tens of thousands of people fucking just enjoying the thing that you just spent your life on. Yeah. You you can't replace that, man. You just can't like, and I had a great time during the pandemic, spending time with my kids fucking on twitch playing video games making more money doing that than i did in a band in like 10 years and (laughs) fucking crushing it and just and then i get to just go to my bed and it's not moving it's not on a bus (laughs) awesome but you cannot compare that to just that feeling of nervous energy being on the stage even if it's a small crowd you're fucking like holy shit this is amazing so what it did for me personally is it made me appreciate that made me appreciate the fact that you know even though we're not the biggest band in the world there are people who enjoy our music and just helping them get through the day is like important to me you know so that's what it did for me well that's great to hear man and i want to wish you the best of luck with this cycle i hope it's the biggest thing in the world and i hope you headline download next year and whatnot <laughs> yeah i don't even know if i hope for that anymore because you know, <laughs> but yeah you know maybe maybe play download at least right yeah man yeah right dude sure. i'm gonna let you go i think you've got a day stack full of these things uh, sure do all right man thank you appreciate it have a good one Take care.